So let's think of site styles as the control center for our entire websites now. Here, directly in edit mode, we have a great overall vision of what our entire site is styled like. We have all of our component colors, which are the colors that are used throughout various components. So buttons and accordions and menus and um, various alerts and warnings, right? We have all the various shades of white through black that are used within all of the components as well. Next is we have all of our text colors. So these are the default font colors that are used for headers and text and links throughout entire site. Uh, and then we have things where we can manage various features. Uh, we can add fonts and font families. And then lastly, we have swatches, which are really powerful. We're not gonna try to cover all this in this one video. Right now in this video, what we're gonna look at is let's go ahead and look at what base styles we have directly inside site styles. So what are the settings that we have directly in site styles and how can we use those? So at the very top of these settings, we have a detailed site styles palette. This just gives, when you check this, it just gives us a little bit more detail on all of the various colors. Um, and when you have swatches installed, it'll actually give you more swatches, uh, more details of every single swatch as well. Uh, next, we, we can display or show that sizing chart. And you might be wondering, what is this sizing chart? Um, this is just a convenient sizing grid that is kind of baked into a lot of the um, sizing settings throughout Foundation 6 and throughout the swatches. And so when you see these, it's just a, it gives you a visual, visible representation of like how big is 40 pixels? How big is 128 pixels? So it kind of gives you an idea of how much space something will take. Next up is we have this background settings, and this has to do with the site background. See here, you'll notice that we have color, we have image, so this is the background image, as, along with all the tiling and image sizing options. So do you want it covered? Do you want it to fill the screen? Do you want it, is it a tiled image? You can provide different images on small, medium, and large devices. Uh, and then we have the same thing for warehouse. So if you wanna warehouse your images as well, you can do that. Now, one great thing is that using this link tool that's built into Rapweaver, you can actually navigate and actually use the images that are built directly into the Rapweaver resources um, as well. That's a great way if you don't want to upload images uh, via an FTP app. And lastly, we have custom CSS. This is great. There's a ton of great like gradient generators out there on the web. And basically, you can build out custom gradients or a custom background, get the CSS from a lot of these background generating tools and just paste it directly here inside the custom CSS and um, it'll display straight in your website background. Now, one thing you'll notice is actually you can turn on multiples of these settings as well. So let's say, for example, if you were using a tiled image, but you wanted to also set a color in the background, you can easily enable both color and image. Now, if you click on this plus button, it actually unveils some more advanced background settings at the bottom. So if you wanted a fixed background or if you want to play with background clipping and whatnot, um, you can do some really cool advanced stuff with some of these settings. Next is our site sizing. Um, so we can either go unlimited with or you can set a max width that you want your website content to go. Um, so the default is 1200 pixels. Next up is we have our site colors, our component colors. And these are the, going to be the various colors that you can choose for things like buttons and accordions and a lot of other components within foundation. Um, they will utilize these colors. So if you want to customize what the primary color is, you can definitely do that. And for you'll notice that you have the ability to change the background color as well as the text color that is used on top of components. So for example, when you have a primary button, um, it'll be this blue background with white text, but you have control over both colors. Next, as I uh, described earlier, we can customize all the various shades from white to black. These colors, again, are used across all the various uh, foundation components. And let's say, for example, you wanted your site to have a kind of a blue tint or a red tint. You can kind of do um, change these up so that it's white, but maybe it's a slight blue shade of white or it's a, you know, a red tint of black. Right. So that um, if you wanted to really morph these colors into, um, you know, customizing it for just how your site is going to look and feel, you can definitely do that. Next is gonna be our text colors. So we have, of course, colors for um, headers, subheaders, small units that are a part of headers, as well as our default text colors and links and link hovering. Um, then we also have the ability to have, just like Foundation One, 
alternate colors. So um, within Foundation, you can have a default color as, as, well, as well as an alternate color. Uh, we'll be reviewing that inside a different video on how do you leverage this alternate styles. Then next up, you'll notice that we have a lot of really great text sizing options. So headers, H1 all the way through um, text, which is default, you know, paragraphs and lists. Um, you'll notice that we have sizing for small, medium, and large. Now, what you'll notice is these settings are actually done inside pixels. However, on the published page, the rem unit will be used so that the sizes properly scale between mobile all the way to desktop devices. Lastly, we have some kind of some generic settings toward the bottom for bullet lists that kind of give you the ability to define what your default bullet list will be. Do you want it to be a circle or a dot or no bullets at all? And do you want your numbered list to be alpha or decimals or Roman numerals and things of that nature? And the very last setting here is for global radius. So for things like buttons and other components, when you define it as rounded, this is the exact border radius that will be used for all of those. This allows us to have a really kind of global feel to all of our components when we make them rounded. Now I'm sure over time, site styles is probably gonna get a little bit more settings, maybe a few settings added towards the bottom here, um, but the, hopefully this will give you a great overview of how to use site styles and what its purpose is for.